Hello everyone, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Invest 95L and the potential areas in the Caribbean that it could impact further on down the road. Before we do start, however, be sure to like and subscribe, as those are the little things you can do to help my channel grow. And we're gonna get started here. So, looking at the National Hurricane Center, latest 8 o'clock a.m. advisory on June 25th. 20% um, chance of development yesterday actually was 40%, so chances have gone down. But I'm going to be talking about today about A, how it could still develop, and B, regardless of development, the areas that it could impact regardless with a lot of moisture and increased wind. All right, so disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the far eastern Atlantic are associated with a strong tropical wave. If any development over the next several days, there will be marginally conducive environmental conditions. The first system, like we talked about in, in our last video, we did talk about the system that was in front of this one that has since dissipated yesterday. Um, that sort of cleared the way, if you will, to make for some slightly more conducive conditions. Um, this wave will move westward 15 to 20 miles an hour, as that is the speed they usually move at, um, across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic through the middle of next week. So again, 20% chance here of development. So looking at some of the, now the tracking maps, well, actually, first, let's look at the uh, low position. You can see it's basically at around 22 west and about 8.2 8, 8 degrees north. All right, so it is sitting pretty far south. All right, usually the tropical waves come between 10 and 20 degrees north latitude. So I would say this is a little bit farther south than usual. And that's a good thing because that's where some of the warmer waters are. All right, so some of the tracking maps still have to uh, release. Like some more models have to release out with their data. So that might be available later. But the couple models that are on here, the two models, do have a tracking westward, which is pretty much expected. All right. And you can see some more ensemble models here with the GEFS. Again, they still have to be released a little bit further. But you can see moving, just like the National Hurricane Center said, in that west to kind of like northwest direction, as you can see here. Um, now, I will say one thing, though. They did have the cone farther south. In the earlier updates, they kind of had it going up like this. So, the, so it's going south, so that does mean maybe it'll be dealing with some slightly warmer waters now. Maybe that'll raise its chances for development. Who knows? All right, so, and then the GEPS always, uh, they do have to come out still as well. So looking at the satellite imagery, you can see there is a lot of convection, all right? We're gonna, there's no doubt about that. We're not really seeing any low-level swirl. Not necessarily. There is a little bit going on in, the, like, right in there on the last frame. Um, but I don't really see anything, like, rotating necessarily. You can, it is, there is a very little bit of rotation there in that center. Although the low pressure that their latest had it at 22 west and 8 degrees north. So that would be like right here. All right. And so if you look at the low placement with where the activity is, it's not very, I mean, it, it, it's it's associated with itself. Like what, what I mean by that is, is that the low and the convection are right on top of each other, right? Usually we don't like to see that. We like to see it organized a bit more. We see more on the convection on the northeast or east side. So we're not seeing that quite yet, but you can definitely see it's trying to rotate itself. It's trying to rotate itself. Um, so looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies, um, they're not too warm, but they are above average. Uh, and that is kind of a good sign. You can see the storm is pretty much sitting right about here. And we'll be tracking in this direction towards the kind of like these waters over here, which are also above average, maybe even by a little bit more. So we're going to be watching maybe for development further down the road. That's why the cone is so big because it could develop anywhere in here. All right, that's what the National Hurricane Center there is saying. Um, looking at the sea surface temperatures themselves, I'll have a better map like right after this one to show you. All right, because this one is hard to tell like the exact temperature. But you can see anywhere in the yellow, that means the waters are above 77 or above 78 Fahrenheit. And that's pretty much what you need. All right, so you can see right in this zone right here is where we do see the warmer waters. And those oranges, if the lows stay south enough, which by the National Hurricane Center, it could, right? Because if it tracks in this direction, it might briefly touch some cooler water and then go back into the warmer waters once it hits the Caribbean, all right? And the models, we're going to be looking at the main models at GFS, the Canadian and the European model as well, although they still do kind of have um, some stuff to pick up as well, right? Because the models, when, a, when it's a newly recognized system, and sometimes the models do take time to pick it up. So here is the sea surface temperatures. You can see right where it's sitting, between 81 and 83 right in here. Um, as it does track to the northwest, it might start to run into some waters between 78 and 80. Then if it moves back west again, waters will start getting back into the low 80s, pretty much kind of like the exact same of where it is right now. 
right? 82 here, 82 over here. So overall, it's a pretty, it, there's pretty warm waters. But if this, if the tropical waves were to merge a little bit further north off the coast of Africa, like around here, kind of like where they usually do sometimes, look at these waters, 68, 65, right? So when they merge farther down south, like they are, the waters are a lot warmer. We're seeing low to mid 80s, all right? And that's obviously a good sign for the tropical system. Um, now, looking at the wind shear, some of the dry air and shear maps I normally show you uh, from Tractor Tropics or for some reason, like that website does kind of uh, glitch out sometimes. But you can see the overall wind shear in the tropical Atlantic is below where we normally would see it for this time of year. All right. Again, it goes up and down because shear changes a lot every day. But even over the past few days, you can see we've been staying below that line for a little while now. All right. So wind shear is below average. So that is a good sign. Uh, let's start looking at some of the models. So GFS model, here we go. Um, as you can see, there is a tropical wave right there. And there's going to be more behind it. You're going to see as well. So there's tropical wave number one, or Invest 95L, which we're looking at. And you can see it does track towards the uh, islands, the Windward Islands and Lesser Antilles, and will be there, according to this model, by Wednesday morning. All right? And then continue moving west from there forward. All right? So then moving through the e Eastern Caribbean. We'll see what happens with it after that. All right, and then more waves will be emerging behind that, right? Here's another one, and then here's another one <laughs> behind that. The thing that makes this storm or 95L so significant is that usually in like the mid and June time frame, we don't see waves merging off the coast of Africa, not in this fashion. We usually see that more in the heart of hurricane season, maybe July or August, or we start to see it in July, but through August and September, we usually see that. So the fact that it's happening this early does actually kind of maybe say something about this hurricane season. Uh, Canadian model, you see the energy is there, right? Look, there's a lot more of it. It's still strung out. This is what now Wednesday morning, they have it all the way back here. The GFS had it here. So that maybe tells us the Canadian model hasn't moving slower um, or it's not really moving slower. It's just taking a little longer to get there. The Canadian model has it there by overnight Thursday into early Friday with a lot more energy and a lot. It's circular, right? Like we like to see tropical systems, right? They're circular. But then from there, it actually moves north. So instead of going through the Caribbean like this, like the GFS had it, sort of like this, they have it going in this direction. And there it is right there. All right. So GFS and Canadian have two separate tracks. Um, it's okay. Models disagree. And then if we were to hit the Western Atlantic, right, you're going to see right here that it moves to the Bahamas by late Saturday into Sunday. And then what happens after that? They actually have a little bit of moisture and energy getting thrown into Florida. All right, so uh, we'll be watching for that. Uh, we'll be watching the southeast coast as well because Canadian, I mean, that's 10 days, but still, it's something to watch. Now, what I was saying about regardless of development, right? Let me show you. Here's a GFS model. Look at this huge surge of moisture here that comes in by Wednesday morning. Now, of course, the Canadian had it on overnight Thursday and the Friday, but the dark greens, right? That's a lot of moisture. And remember, the tropical nature is those daily thunderstorms. So they already have increased moisture in general. So throwing that in there doesn't really help at all. And then the moisture moves through Puerto Rico and moves through Haiti and Hispaniola. So even if the storm doesn't track directly through there, even if it tracks just south, convection can be to the north, and therefore moisture is getting thrown into all these uh, Caribbean islands. So let me just say, just because it doesn't have a name doesn't mean that it's not significant, right? Even if it doesn't have a name, it can still be significant. Now, if we flip over to the Western Atlantic here so you can see it better, uh, there's the moisture. That's where we're seeing it, right? And what happens after that, right? Because there's a whole nother, like this is what's left of 95L. Here's another separate moisture surge in the Western Gulf, all right? And then they kind of have 95L maybe rotating out due to a high pressure. And I know, I know it's very hard to track on the on the preset map, but we're going to go uh, to the Canadian model now because remember, they had it moving a little bit slower. So here it is over time, right? There actually is kind of like a two-part moisture surge. The southern part of the islands actually get a little bit of moisture, kind of like far out from the storm, Wednesday afternoon, and then there's the actual storm. Now, they actually have even more moisture. We see dark greens, even a little bit of blues on the map. Again, this is overnight Thursday and the very early Friday, right? And then Puerto Rico gets it, and then eventually Haiti and Hispaniola as well. All right, so there it is tracking uh, to the north, and then it moves to the Western Atlantic, and then we see it moving through the Bahamas. So there it is, moving to the Bahamas and then to the north. And yes, even eventually, if you were to extend this out a couple more frames, pretty much right into Florida, right? Kind of like moving in uh, in sort of this track, all right? So we don't really know the track after this. I can't assume what the model is going to say, but 
I could stop it right here and say like this, the moisture according to this latest from the Canadian is heading towards Florida. Now, European model, you might think where's the European model. Now, European model actually kind of has this diminishing a little bit. So here we are right now, there's a spin right there, um, moving to the west, right? And as you can see, there's pretty much nothing left of it. I mean, there's not even really any spin anymore. Um, this is Tuesday. It could get itself to get a little bit more. Maybe it could reorganize very late Thursday into Friday, kind of like the Canadian had it, except it's a lot farther south, which is good because farther south typically, especially when you're talking about this time of year, there's usually less Saharan air dust and there's usually warmer sea surface temperatures. All right, and then there's the European right there. It kind of has it in the Eastern Caribbean, similar to what the GFS had it. So I was right in saying it, that the European is, is dissipating it, but then it could reform it. But then it dissipates again, and it's gone. So um, the models aren't really kind of like, not, they're not really biting into this yet, if you will. They're really not catching on to it. Um, could it be because it's a newly developed system? It could be just because it may not actually develop. But it's still something to keep watch on because regardless, it's, it's going to affect human life. Um, GFS, all right, here we go, wind shear. Um, you can see really, there's really not much. I mean, blue and green, I'd say low to moderate wind shear or low to medium. Um, it's really not too, in, doesn't really get too intense until, until we get towards the Caribbean. Then you can see that that southwester flow, southwesterly flow, which is the same exact kind of shear that tore the other system apart, right? Here's your little kind of right here. It's getting sheared off at this point. All right, so that's, um, that's something that's going to weaken the storm a little bit. And then it moves into the Caribbean. Uh, Canadian model. Uh, here we have the Canadian, and you can see uh, sort of the same thing here, right? Here's here's like early Wednesday morning. There's late Thursday in the Friday. You can see the low is like right here, and it's getting sheared from the northwest this time. So it's kind of getting all that convection is getting pushed this way. So the shear could be a problem here. I don't think dry air is too much of a problem. That map was not loading either. It was it kept saying error. Um, but the dry air is low to moderate. Um, there is some stronger uh, amounts of Saharan dust up here. So if the storm stays far south enough, far south enough, it could avoid some of that. And also keep in mind, here's the high pressure. That's gonna, what's going to help steer it in this direction. Without that, without that high, right, this this could have just turned and moved out to sea and not affected anybody. We've seen that happen before, where the low just turns away because there's no steering flow to kind of influence it. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more updates. I am the Weather Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.